Lord of God, come into this space. Oh, Word of God, come send us your grace. Open our minds, show us your truth. Transform our lives anew. Boys and girls, how are you? Good to see you today. Uh, last time we were together, I talked to you about this book, Eucharist. I said that after Easter, we would begin using this book. They are on the table right outside my office. Um, there's only six in this class. So there's still five of these left there. So only one person has been able to pick it up so far. Please ask mom or dad or Graham or somebody to come here to the church basement and pick up this book because after Easter, we will be using this as we prepare for First Communion. Okay, a very, very pretty cover. We have wheat and grapes and bread and wine so it will get you kind of in the mood for making your first communion. Very good. All right, now I put these palms here, these little palms, to remind us that this Sunday is Palm Sunday, the last Sunday of the season of Lent and the beginning of Holy Week, a very, very special time in the church. In our Lenten Day programs, we talked about Palm Sunday and how Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on the back of a little donkey. And we said that that was because Jesus was showing humility. And the people were so happy to see him. They yelled, Hosanna, Hosanna, which was a greeting. And they waved palms in the air. And they put them on the ground for him to walk across on his donkey. A very happy, special time. So I hope you look at some of the videos that are on YouTube that tell you a lot about Holy Week and about the Last Supper and about Jesus. And you'll, you'll really learn a whole lot more about it and you'll enjoy it more. Now today we're going to open our books to page 161. All right, our Christ in Us, page 161. And we're going to talk about praying because there is no better way to prepare for the coming of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus at Easter time than through prayer. At the top it says, how do we pray? Well, I've had you guys practicing, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. This is my first confession for quite a while now. And I hope that you have that memorized. Let's try it together. Bless me, Father, 
for I have sinned. This is my first confession. Very good. Now, on page 88 in your book, you have your act of contrition that you're supposed to be learning off by heart. Let's give that a shot, okay? My God, I am sorry for my sins with all my heart. In choosing to do wrong and failing to do good, I have sinned against you, whom I should love above all things. I firmly intend with your help to do penance, to sin no more, and to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Our Savior Jesus Christ suffered and died for us. In his name, my God, have mercy. Please keep practicing both of these prayers because you need to know them for first reconciliation. All right, back again to page 161. And I'm going to learn a little bit about how Jesus taught us to pray. Jesus taught us how to pray. We should pray every day. The Holy Spirit helps us. Like Jesus, we pray with our thoughts, words, and actions, both silently and out loud. We pray alone, with our families, and with the church. We pray in many ways. We praise, we thank, and we bless God. And we also pray for ourselves and for others. At the bottom it says, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly king, O oh God, almighty Father. And that's taken right from the Mass, from the Gloria. Now we're going to look at page 162. It says, Jesus taught us how to pray. Jesus taught us to pray to God our Father. The Holy Spirit helps us to bless, praise, and thank God for his gifts. We ask God to help us and others. We ask for forgiveness for our sins. Jesus gave us a prayer that includes all these different ways to pray. You will learn about the Lord's Prayer later in your book. But let's stop right here and say it together. I'm sure some of you have been practicing that with mommy and daddy. When people asked Jesus how to pray, this is what he told them. He said, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Remember, amen means, I believe. Like Jesus, we pray with both words and actions, both silently and out loud. Sometimes we do all these things together. At Mass, we listen to a reading from the Gospel. Before the reading, we pray out loud, out loud Glory to you, O Lord. We pray silently for the Word of God to stay always on our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Always. You know, the, the readings shouldn't go in one ear and out the other. They should be planted within you, just as it says, in your mind, on your lips, and in your heart. Do you remember what I told you the gospel means, the word gospel? It means good news. 
the good news of Jesus, what he taught us, what he wanted us to know, how he wants us to live our lives, how to pray, how to respect people, how to love people. It's all so important. On, on the lower part of the page, it says, who taught me how to pray? <coughs> well, we learn at home, first of all, from a mother, from a father, a grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, big sisters, big brothers. You see them praying, and you ask them how, the, how to pray, and they help you. They show you. Then when you get a little bigger and you go to mass and you go to religion, Sunday school, you learn how to pray even more. And, you know, you can pray from actual written prayers like the Our Father and the Hail Mary, but you can make up your own prayers. And you don't have to say them out loud. Didn't it just say here sometimes you pray silently? You can think these things. You can think, dear God, I thank you for being so good to me. I thank you for my mom. I thank you for the food on our table. You pray and you're doing many things. You're talking to God. You're letting him know that you love him. You're letting him know if you're sad or if you're happy. That's praying. And you know it says you have to pray, you should pray every day. You have to pray lots of times a day, a hundred times. It doesn't have to be a big, long prayer. It can just be, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, be good to me. Father, help me. These are prayers, okay? Now we're going to look on 163, and it says, Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Now, the word disciples means people who followed Jesus. Jesus' disciples learned to pray as Jesus taught. They gave what they learned to the whole church. The Holy Spirit also guided the church to pray in new ways. You know, the Holy Spirit is always there. We don't see the Holy Spirit, but we know the Holy Spirit is with us all the time, and encouraging, helping, guiding, directing, focusing. The Holy Spirit is within and without you all the time. One of the church's most important prayers is the Hail Mary. In this prayer, we honor Mary, the mother of Jesus. We say that Mary is special because she was chosen to become the mother of God's son. We also ask Mary to pray for us always. And here's the beautiful prayer to her. The first words of this prayer were said to Mary herself by the angel Gabriel. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And I'm going to just stop for a minute. I want to show you something. Yesterday, see, I'm recording this on March 26th. Yesterday was what we call the Feast of the Annunciation. And here we have a picture that shows the angel Gabriel speaking to Mary, to the Blessed Virgin Mary. God had sent Gabriel to speak to Mary, to tell her that he wanted her to be the mother of his son. Now, Mary could have said no. She could have said, I'm not going to do that. But she didn't. Mary immediately said yes to God. And she was chosen before she was ever born to be the mother of God's son. She was born without original sin. She was so pure and good. And she was the, the best and the only person God wanted to be the mother of his son. 
And that's why when we say the Hail Mary, think about this picture. Think about the Archangel Gabriel there before the Blessed Mother and talking to her in a gentle, kind way, being sent right from God as his messenger. Beautiful. And that's why we think about Mary all the time because she was chosen by God. All right, just turn over again. And we see a little girl up at the top of this page with something in her hand. Does anybody know what that is? Good. It's a rosary. All right. It says we pray the Hail Mary often when we play, pray the rosary. The rosary is a prayer of devotion in honor of Mary. When we pray the rosary, we use special beads. We think about the lives of Mary and Jesus. You can learn how to pray the rosary by looking in the back of your book. You know, the back of these books is a treasury. There's all kinds of special information there. We'll be talking about the rosary during the month of May because that's the month of Mary. But don't wait until May. Look it up yourself. Now here we have a picture, a drawing of the rosary on the bottom of the page. It says, color the picture of the rosary, show your picture to a friend, and then pray the Hail Mary together. If you look at it, you see a crucifix. This is just a cross, this one, because we don't see Jesus on there, but a cross. And we see a single bead and then three beads together and another single bead. Then after we get past the part that holds it together, we have five sets of Hail Mary beads. All right? So there are a lot of beads on here. And when you say the rosary, it takes you maybe 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes if you're really putting your whole heart and soul in it. But it's a beautiful prayer to our Blessed Mother. Mary is very, very fond of children. Did you know that? And she will listen to your prayers and she will help you. Now let's look at the top of 165. And it says the church prays together at special times. The church celebrates the sacraments as well as holy people and events. Some parishes also gather to pray the Psalms at morning and evening prayer. Psalms are songs of praise from the Bible. The Psalms are lovely. It says up at the top, faith words, Psalms, songs of praise from the Bible. If you have a Bible at home, I hope you have a children's Bible, and maybe you and mom or somebody at home can sit down and look at some of the Psalms and see how beautifully they're written and the messages that they carry. All right, here's a little bit from Psalm 100 in the green area on your page. It says, Shout joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. You know what I like there? Shout joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Now there's something in there for you kids. Mommy and Daddy and maybe Grandma, somebody in your house, might ask you to do something. Would you please take this loaf of bread and put it away in the bread drawer neatly? And the way to do that is to jump up and say, sure. You shouldn't sit there and say, oh, I have to do everything here. I get tired of it, you know. Oh, that's fresh. It's not a way to talk to mommy or anybody. But nothing makes a parent's heart beat happier than when you say, can I do anything to help? 
Would you like me to put that bread away? Can I help you with the dishes, Mom? I really want to help you clean up the bathroom because I made some of the mess. A parent, their heart gets 10 times bigger and pumps and pumps with joy when a kid says, I will do something gladly. All right, let's look down here where it says activity. It says a psalm is a prayer that is like a poem or a song. With a friend, write a psalm giving thanks to God for all he has given you. Write one line and then have your friend write the next one. Use the words below to help you start your prayer. Now, it might be hard with COVID and everything to have a friend that you can sit and do this with. You can always ask mom or somebody in the house to do this with you. And you'd be surprised what good ideas you come up with. And it says to use these words. Thank you. Gift. Love. God. And then share your psalm with the group. Well, your group could be your family at, at the supper table. How's that? Normally, maybe you could share it in class the next time you came, but this year is very different. And I, I wish we could all be together every single week and I could see your happy faces and get to talk to you and really get to know you. But this is the way it is this year. Next year, I know it's going to be so much better and everybody will get to see your happy faces. All right, let's flip over. And it says, Jesus prayed in many ways. Jesus prayed with words from the Bible and in his own words. He prayed silently and out loud. Jesus often spent time alone with God, the Father, in prayer. We pray in many ways, just as Jesus did. We pray in our own words. We use prayers we learn at home, in school, and in our parish. We pray out loud and silently to ourselves. We can pray while reading the Bible or looking at a holy image. Sometimes we pray by just sitting quietly and remembering that God is with us. You know, that's the hardest one for me to do, even though I'm a grown woman, to just sit there very quietly, and they call that meditating, where you, you close your eyes and you breathe softly and you think about God. But I, I can't get things out of my mind the way I should. Maybe it's better with you guys because you're young yet. And your mind is, is not cluttered with as much junk as a grown-up has. But all of these ways are ways for you to pray by yourself, in church, with your family, saying prayers out loud, or just, I call them brain prayers, things you think of that you want to say to God. And you never open your mouth. It's all silent. It says God listens to all our prayers, even those we say silently in our hearts. What matters most is that we lift our hearts and minds to God when we pray. God is always, always listening. He is never too busy for you guys. God is always there for you. It's, it's you and it's me and all the other people who get busy and get distracted and we, we turn away. We're really saying no to God when we do that. God should come first. Then you can do all your other stuff. But never, ever forget to pray. It should be the highlight of your day. Talking to God. Making your feelings and your, your innermost thoughts known to God. Asking for help thanking for help, asking for blessings for your family, your friends, your teachers. You can do it, guys. Second grade is very, very special. 
I taught second grade in school for a long time. And I loved working with second graders because they absorb religion like a sponge. They love God. They love Mary. They love Joseph. And they're so happy to learn about God and about church. And you are like that. Please remember to practice your prayers. Please remember to do your homework, which is page 167, okay? 167 and 168. Now, it's not a lot, but it's enough for you to go back and look at what we've just talked about and do it again. Look, here's one of my favorite saints on page 167. Saint Bernadette. Mary appeared to Saint Bernadette, a poor French girl, in a town called Lourdes. Mary called herself the Immaculate Conception. She told Bernadette to pray the rosary. Many people visit the shrine at Lourdes every year to pray for healing. Bernadette was only like 14 years old. She was very poor had very, very little education. And at first, people didn't believe her that she had seen the Blessed Mother. It took some time for them to wake up and understand and, and see what a special person Bernadette was that Mary chose her to appear before. Eventually, Bernadette became a sister. She didn't live to be very old. She died of tuberculosis, but she made an impact on the world. Saint Bernadette, Lourdes, France. And it's just a beautiful story, and I hope someday you either find a video about that or find a book about it and learn more about Bernadette. So you've got these two pages of homework, which very little, top of one page, and just a little bit on the next. That shouldn't take you long. But go back over what we did so that you remember it. Because if it, remember, we don't want things to go in one ear and out the other because they don't mean anything. I wish you a very good week. Make sure you go to Mass on Palm Sunday. And pray a lot this week. Holy Week is so special. Next week we'll be talking about the resurrection and about the beauty of Easter Day. God bless you all. Keep me in your prayers. I keep you in mine. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>